right, thank you, Patrick. So, all right, where are we? All right, so I work for a cookie conglomerate that has a bunch of franchises. And I want to create an AI agent to help all my franchise owners improve their business by allowing them to analyze customer data, allow them to create marketing campaigns, and, and analyze and develop sales strategies. And so one of the things that they'll be able to build with this AI agent is an Instagram ad campaign where they can promote the best selling cookie in their franchise, and the AI agent is going to create an image for the Instagram ad, as well as a caption that's going to capture the hearts and minds of all of our cookie lovers to really drive sales. So I gave general intelligence to my franchise owners with the off-the-shelf model, and it was giving good results, but they were too generic, and they weren't tailored to our business or the individual franchises. And this is where the Mosaic AI platform comes in. Mosaic AI is going to allow us to extend this general intelligence with our enterprise data so that we can have data intelligence. In this demo, we're going to build, uh, sorry, in this demo, we're going to build uh, an agent that's going to use the Unity Catalog tools that Patrick just mentioned. So in this architecture, we're going to leverage these UC functions that can now be leveraged as tools. And UC functions can be SQL functions that access your data warehouse. They can be Python functions. They can be model endpoints. And they can even be remote functions, which are going to allow you to call external services like Slack or e uh, email or even file a ticket if you need to. So to build all of this, we're going to use the Mosaic AI platform. And with that, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So here I am inside. Uh, so there's three capabilities that we're going to use inside of Mosaic AI to actually build this data intelligence. So the first is we're going to use our tools catalog to actually build the data intelligence. The next, we're going to build uh, and understand our quality with agent evaluation. And then we're going to be able to debug and improve our quality with the MLflow tracing capability. So with that, let's dive into Databricks. So here we are inside Unity Catalog. You can see that I have some functions that I'm going to use as tools. And these are governed alongside my AI, my unstructured data, and my structured data. So to help demystify what a tool is, we're going to go ahead and click into our franchise sales. So you can see in here, it's just a simple SQL query that's accessing my sensitive transaction data. And this is where it's really important that your tools are governed alongside your data because only the people who have access to this underlying transactions table are able to successfully call this tool. And that's why we need this centralized governance across data, AI, and tools. So some of the other tools that we've created that are leveraging our enterprise data are in here as well. So franchise by city and by country are just like helper functions to help me get the sales data. And then this franchise reviews tool is actually grabbing customer reviews from our social media site. So all of these tools are leveraging my enterprise data. So we're going to go ahead now and extend a base model with these tools. So I'm going to come over here into the AI Playground. And we're going to jump in. And then from the AI Playground, I'm going to select a tools-enabled base model. And so I'm going to, you can tell it's tools-enabled because it has this little icon on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and select Llama 3. From here, I'm now going to add hosted tools. So these are my Unity Catalog tools that are hosted inside the secure and scalable Databricks environment. So in here, we're going to access the tools that we just showed you in the AI schema. So I can use the syntactic sugar to grab all of those tools. And then my marketing team has created a tool for me. So I'm just going to copy paste it real quick because it's kind of long. So we're going to put this in here. And this tool is going to generate an Instagram image using the Shutterstock image AI model that Patrick just announced, as well as a caption. So now it's time to actually test this. Before I forget, we're going to crank our temperature down to zero, because this is a live demo. Uh, and then now we're going to quickly copy paste a prompt in here. So this prompt is going to say, hey, send marketing an Instagram post with an image and a tagline for the best-selling cookie in the San Francisco store so we can increase our sales and show that we listened to customer feedback. So we're going to go ahead and here uh, and click, uh-oh. 
<laughs> We're doing it live. Uh, 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 uh. Well, that should have unfortunately worked. Hold on, we'll try again. So we'll go back in here. We're going to add our tools, AI star. And then we're going to come in here and add our marketing. Oops. Oh, it's now in our autocomplete in here. Uh, and now let's try this again. Hmm. Unfortunately, it looks like there's a connection with <laughs> our uh, unfortunate. Uh, what is this? Catalog retail. Oh, 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 I'm so silly. I typed in the wrong name of the function. You all should have caught that for me. I need to type in retailprod.ai. Thank goodness for error messages. So we're going to come in here, and now we're going to add this in. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and do this. Thank you, thank you. All right. So <laughs> what is happening here is going to be a little bit magical. So we're going to come inside. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh my goodness. All right, we're going to have to bear with me. We're going to have to do it all again. All right. We're coming in here. Uh, coming in here, sorry. Uh, this is why you don't do it live. All right, retail prod.ai, all of the functions in there. We're going to add in our marketing tool that's going to generate our Instagram ad. All right, we're in here. We're going to send the prompt. And we're going to make sure it's temperature zero, which is what we kind of forgot there. Temperature zero, live demo. All right, here we go. Now we're going to send this. And what's happening is going to be kind of magical. So as we come in here, you're going to see that Llama 3 is going to do chain of thought reasoning. So it's going to figure out which tools it needs to call in order to execute this. So you can come in here and say, oh, the first thing I had to do was grab the franchise ID for my San Francisco store. The second thing is it needed that to be able to access our franchise sales, because it's trying to identify what that best-selling cookie is. Then it's going to grab all of that sales data in here. So it grabbed all my sales data. And from here, I identified the best-selling cookie is this almond biscotti cookie. From there, it said, hey, we need to show that we listen to customer feedback. So we need to look into our customer reviews tool. From there, it's going to ask, hey, what do customers like about this biscotti cookie? And it's going to say, oh, they like the crunchy texture and unique flavor. And it's going to send all of this to my Slack tool that's going to generate this Instagram image and caption and send it to my marketing team on Slack so they can review it before we post it on our social media. And so now, the moment we've all been waiting for is let's see what it actually returned. So I'm going to jump over into my Slack. And this is the image that was generated by the Shutterstock Image AI model that shows our image biscotti. And then you can also see that it creates this customized uh, caption where it says, our customers rave about our biscotti for its crunchy texture, unique flavor, and perfect coffee dipping quality. And so this is what is generated. And this is how you can use data intelligence to extend your general intelligence to improve a base model. Now, what happens if I remove the intelligence? So I can come in here, kind of like we did earlier, and we're going to remove all of these in, uh, enterprise data-enabled tools, and we're going to run it all again. So now we've taken away all of our enterprise data access from this, and now it's still going to generate an image, and it's still going to generate a caption according to that prompt, but it's going to be much more generic. So as we jump back into Slack, and it's going to show me my new image soon down here. OK, it's successfully sent. Here we go. So this is the image that it now created. So all it had to go off of was that it's a cookie that's in San Francisco, and so it tried to create some kind of cool Instagram ad. Yes. And And if you take a deeper look at the caption, it's very generic. So it just says, our best-selling cookie is backed by popular demand. Share your favorite cookie moments with us. And so not really tailored to our specific business or the franchise or using our enterprise data at all. And this is why data intelligence is so important. So we just showed how you can use the tools catalog to extend your general intelligence with your enterprise data to create data intelligence. But how do I know that this agent is high quality? So the way that I know it's high quality is I'm going to use agent evaluation and ML flow tracing tools. So agents are really hard. Like, how do you know if what we just did was good or bad? So we're actually, and there's so many different things you can do with an agent as well. 
So we're actually going to have to launch a pilot program with a subset of the franchises and give them the agent evaluation review app. So this review app is going to allow all of your franchise owners to interact with your agent, whether or not they have a Databricks account. And then it's going to allow them to give feedback on the response. So they can come down here and they can say yes, and they can explain why or why not uh, that this answer was good. And then they can go ahead and click Done and submit this feedback. This feedback that is submitted is then logged in a Delta table in Unity Catalog in your account that you can then build an evaluation data set off of, get confidence that you can go into production. Or as I have done, I enabled Lake House monitoring on top so that I can observe how my pilot program is running. So you can see over here the different franchises that I set up this on. And here is me tracking their negative scores with the agent over time. And you can see that something is going terribly wrong with the Los Angeles franchise. They're getting a lot of negative feedback on the agent. So if I scroll a bit further to actually investigate their ratings and what questions they're getting, they're rating poorly, we can see that their actual feedback that they're giving me on here is that it's returning irrelevant reviews. So it's returning reviews from San Francisco stores or non-LA stores to them. Or it's even hallucinated that there's a Liberty Chip cookie, which we don't sell one of those at the cookie conglomerate. So we're going to need to dive in deeper to figure out what's going wrong with our quality here. So we're going to use ML flow tracing to get deeper and figure out what exactly is going wrong. So I'm going to jump inside of a notebook where I've actually queried my assessment logs in here. And in here, we have captured an MLflow trace automatically for you. So MLflow is a popular tracking API for Gen AI and machine learning experimentation and deployment. And so we've extended it to now work with Compound AI systems, where you can now trace your input to the system and how it's transformed as it goes through every step of the system along the way to actually create that output in the end. So I can click on one of these traces, and it's going to open up this stack view. If I click the top of the stack, you can see the question that was sent to the system and the output. So you can see this is the one that's saying, what are customers saying about Liberty Chip? And then this is the absolute hallucination, which we learned from the review app, where it's saying, hey, customers are raving about this cookie, and it's out of this world delicious. But we know there's no such thing as this cookie. So we need to figure out what went wrong. So we're going to go over into our stack, and we're going to dig deeper into it. And so we're going to go to our first tool that was called, which is this customer reviews tool. As we go in here, we're going to see what the input and output of that were. And if I go here, you can see, OK, it's saying that the Liberty Chip cookies out of this world delicious. So this is definitely where the problem's coming from. So we're going to need to dive even deeper into the stack. And when we get down here, we're going to get into our retriever. So this is the thing that is actually retrieving our customer reviews. And so if I look and now, because of tracing, I can actually see the exact reviews that are returned. And so I can see this review is saying, hey, the staff is warm and welcoming, the store was spotless, and the cookies were out of this world delicious. So what's happening is my retriever, because it can't find anything about this Liberty Chip cookie, is just returning random reviews. And so I'm going to need to do two things to fix this. The first, I'm going to need to actually increase my criteria threshold for relevance on my review app retriever. So it says, like, hey, don't return reviews if the relevance is below a certain threshold. And then I'm going to need to do a little more prompt engineering to make sure that if the context that's given to my model isn't relevant to the question that was answered, don't just summarize that context. So I've gone ahead and I've already made those two fixes, and I've redeployed my agent. And so now we've redeployed the review app as well, sent this out to my franchisees and in my pilot. And so now they can say what our customer is saying about oops, the Liberty Chip cookie. And so if I type this in here, you can see that now, instead of hallucinating, it's saying the Liberty Chip cookie is not mentioned in the reviews. It's possible that's not sold in these stores, which is exactly what we wanted to say when this happens. All right, so in this demo, we just showed how you can use the tools catalog to build data intelligence by extending a general, or general intelligent model. We saw how you can use agent evaluation to actually understand your quality by getting your agent into the hands of your franchise owners, even if they don't have Databricks accounts, and allowing them to give that human in the loop feedback with thumbs up, thumbs down. And then we used MLflow tracing to allow you to debug and iterate on your quality to improve your agent. So, 
We talked a lot about many different things in this talk, but there's three main key takeaways that we want you all to really gather about the Mosaic AI platform. The first is that we have to move from general intelligence to data intelligence. And the way that we do this is we augment general intelligence with your enterprise data, and this is going to give you much better insights into what's happening in your business, as well as it's going to improve the quality of your applications. And we saw this with the franchise cookie agent, where the images and the captions for our Instagram ad campaign were much better once we gave it access to that enterprise data. The second thing is that you can also improve quality by moving from these monolithic models to modularize, modularizing them down into AI compound systems, where now you can specialize each step in the system to improve your quality, like we saw with the fact set use case, and also, in many cases, will also improve your latency. And lastly, the Mosaic AI platform is the best platform to build high-quality compound AI systems. We have thousands of customers using uh, the Mosaic AI platform today, 